Welcome to this video on finite differences. By the end of this video, video you will be able to derive higher order finite difference formulas. Okay, so now in a prior video we did Taylor series expansions for the neighboring points xi plus 1 and xi minus 1. So let's try Taylor series expansions for both points. So f of xi minus 1 and f of xi plus 1. So the Taylor series expansion to the plus side, f of xi plus 1 is equal to f of xi plus h times f prime at xi plus 1 half h squared f double prime at xi plus 1 over 3 factorial h cubed times f triple prime using Taylor's theorem's term, Taylor's theorem that would be evaluated now at some unknown location xi1 between xi and xi plus 1. And let's do the Taylor series expansion for the neighboring point to the left. So f of xi minus 1 would be equal to f of xi plus h times, oh sorry, minus h times f prime at xi, right? We're going to the negative side, so it has minus h times f prime plus 1 over 2 h squared f double prime of xi. And then we use Taylor's theorem again, so that would then be minus 1 over 3 factorial times h cubed times f triple prime evaluated at an unknown location xi2. The only thing we know is that it's between xi minus 1 and xi. So let me take the difference of these two Taylor series. So I'm going to subtract the Taylor series for f for f xi minus 1 from the Taylor series for f at xi plus 1. Okay, so on the left-hand side we have f at xi plus 1 minus f at xi minus 1. The first term on the right-hand side is f of xi minus f of xi, so that kind of drops out. And then the next term is h times f prime at xi minus negative h times f prime at xi, so that's 2h f prime at xi. And then the next term is the same in both equations as well. So if I subtract them from each other, they drop out. And then the only term that's left here on the right-hand side is this Taylor's theorem term, which is 1 over 3 factorial times h cubed times the third derivative of f evaluated at xi1 plus the third derivative of f evaluated at xi2. Now, I was interested in calculating f prime at xi, so let me use this equation now and solve for f prime at xi. So I have f prime of xi is equal to, the terms here on the left-hand side, f of xi plus 1 minus f of xi minus 1 divided by 2h. And then the only thing that's left is the Taylor's theorem term, which is then divided by 2h, so it is... <coughs> 1 over 3 factorial, that's 1 over 6, divided by 2, so it's 1 over 12 h cubed divided by h is h squared, times the sum of these two third derivative terms. Okay, so if I use um, the following term to approximate f prime, f of xi plus 1 minus f of xi minus 1 divided by 2h, I will make an error, <coughs> but what is this truncation error? Now, the truncation error is proportional to h squared. So this would be order h squared, or second order. And that was the central difference formula that we had derived uh, before. Now, the method is second order, right? The error scales as h squared, or is proportional to h squared. So what does that mean, that it's a second order method? So what happens to the truncation error if I reduce the spacing between adjacent points h by a factor of 2? <coughs> what? If I reduce h by a factor of 2, then the truncation error will go down by a factor of 4, 2 squared. Second order, I have to square this, so it goes down by a factor of 4. Now, how did we achieve this higher order compared to the forward differences or backward differences, which were just first order? How did we do this? Well, what we did is we combined two different Taylor series together 
in such a way that it eliminated the lowest order or the lowest power of h on the right hand side. And the lowest power of h on the right hand side there is h squared. Well, there's an h as well, but that is multiplying f prime and I want to calculate f prime, so I better not remove that term. So the next one here that I have now removed by combining these two Taylor series is the h squared term in the Taylor series. But because this gets divided by h when I'm solving for f prime, this was the first order error term that the combination of two Taylor series has removed, leaving me with the next term in the Taylor series, which is in the original Taylor series a power of 3 divided by h makes this a second order method. Okay, so here's a challenge question now. Um, the first derivative of a function f of x, which is equal to e of x, is calculated using central differences. Right? This is the central difference formula that we just derived. If we plot the absolute value of the arrow of this numerical approximation versus the grid spacing h that we use to evaluate this derivative, so we change the spacing between adjacent points and then calculate the numerical approximation to the derivative. And because we can analytically calculate the derivative of e to the power x, it's easy for us to actually calculate the true error. Now, if we plot this absolute value of the true error versus the spacing h that we have used, we get these dots here shown in the graph. And now I've plotted this graph in a log-log scale. So it's a logarithm and a logarithm on both axes. And it seems like that all these points, these error values, line up on pretty much a straight line. Now what is the slope of this line? Is it A1, B2, C3? Or D, you're not really sure, you don't really know what the slope would be. Okay. Now, the correct answer is that the slope of this line is 2. Now, why is that? Well, the error is equal to or proportional to, right, second order method. The truncation error is order h squared, which is from the Taylor's theorem's term, right, it is something like 1 half second derivative of f at some unknown location times h squared. Now let me combine the one half and the second derivative at some unknown location psi, which is just a numerical value, into some alpha of psi times, then remaining is the h squared. Let's take the logarithm of this. So I have the logarithm of the error, and now because I'm taking the logarithm and it's only defined for positive numbers, I have to take the absolute of the error. So the logarithm of the absolute of the error is equal to, well, the logarithm of the right-hand side. I apply logarithm rules, right? That gives me that the logarithm of the error is equal to two times the logarithm of h plus the logarithm of the absolute value of a of psi. Now, because I've plotted this in a log-log graph, you see that, right, I'm if I'm plotting something like log of the spacing versus log of the error, you see that the factor that multiplies the log of h is the slope of this line, right? And the slope of this line is the order of the method, which was 2. Okay. Now, we had the idea of combining Taylor series to increase the order of our finite difference approximation. So can we push this idea of eliminating lower powers of h even further right, using additional Taylor series terms? Um, okay, so let's give this a try. So here is my Taylor series for f of xi plus 1. As before, I just carried a little bit more terms in here. Now, if I solve this for f prime that I'm interested in, right, we are left with a leading order error term that is first order. It's the h squared of the next term divided by the h that in the Taylor series multiplies the f prime. So that's the lowest power of h. Now, if I want to improve my order, I have to get rid of this specific term. 
So can I get rid of this h squared term in the Taylor series by using a second Taylor series, for example, for the point xi plus 2? Okay, so I'm adding the point xi plus 2 into the mix, and I'm writing the Taylor series for it. So f at xi plus 2 is equal to... Now my Taylor series expansion is still around the point xi, because that's where I want to know what the first derivative is. So f of xi plus, now the distance is 2h, because it's the second point over. So 2h times f prime of xi, plus 1 over 2 factorial times 2h squared, times f double prime at xi, plus 1 over 3 factorial 2h cubed, times f triple prime at xi, plus the associated fourth order term, and so on. Now the question is, how many times f of xi plus 2 has to be added to the first Taylor series to eliminate the h squared term. So I have the term from the first equation, that's 1 over 2 factorial h squared f double prime of xi. How many times do I have to add the second term to it? So let me just, how many times? Let me just call that c. So c times the term from the second Taylor series. 1 over 2 factorial 2h squared times f double prime at xi. How many times do I have to add them together to get rid of it? So that to make this equal to 0. Well, I have an equation here that I now can solve for c. So let me divide by 1 over 2 f double prime xi times h squared. So that makes this first term 1. And the second term here leaves me with a 2 squared, a 4, so 4 times c, and that's equal to 0. So that means that c has to be equal to negative 1 fourth. So if I add negative 1 fourth times this second Taylor series to the first Taylor series, I get rid of the h squared term, and I'm left only with the h cubed terms. Okay, so let's do this. So f of xi plus 1 plus c times f of xi plus 2, what do I have? Well, I have f of xi, right, from the first equation. And now I'm subtracting 1 fourth times the term from the second Taylor series, which is just the f of xi plus 2, right? That's what's on the left-hand side of the equation. And what do I have on the right-hand side? Well, I have something multiplying f of xi. From the first equation I have the 1, and from the second equation I have the negative 1 fourth. So it's 1 minus 1 fourth times f of xi. Then I have the f prime terms. Let me factor out f prime times h. So from the first Taylor series I have the 1, and then from the second Taylor series I have 2 times negative 1 fourth, so minus 2 fourth. And then I came to the h squared terms. Uh, what are those? Well, I kind of know what they are. They're supposed to be 0, but let's just check this. So if I factor out h squared times f double prime, I have from the first equation just 1 half, and from the second equation I have 4 over 2 times 1 over 4, with a minus sign. Okay, and then next term over. And let me factor out h cubed times f triple prime. So from the first equation I have 1 over 3 factorial, which is 1 over 6. And from the second equation I have 2 cubed, so 8 over 6 times negative 1 fourth. All right, and then I have these additional terms over here that I'm just going to shorten with plus dot 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 dot. Okay. So let's simplify this. I keep the left-hand side the same. 1 minus 1 quarter is just 3 quarters of f at xi. 1 minus 1 half is 1 half h times f prime at xi. And then 1 half minus 1 half is 0. Good. So that's what I wanted to do, right? The combination to get rid of the h squared terms. So that checks out. And then I have 1 sixth minus 2 sixth, which is negative 1 sixth h cubed, times f triple prime plus infinitely many additional terms. Okay, let me 
put this up here. We solve this for f prime at xi. So f prime at xi is equal to, well, I move the 3 fourth f of xi over to the left hand side and then divide by, divide by half h. So that gives me negative 3 f of xi plus 4 times f at xi plus 1 and then minus f of xi plus 2. And then I have these additional terms, which are my truncation errors, right? the leading order error term. And if I divide this h cubed term by h, I get order h cubed divided by h, second order errors. OK, so this is, again, a second order approximation but it uses different data points. Instead of using data points to the left and the right, I'm using data points only to the right of my point xi. And that can become important if I'm interested in the derivative for the very first data point. Right? For the very first data points, I don't have any prior data points because it's the first data point. And so I can use only points to the right. And that would be the formula to approximate the derivative still with second order. Now, how is this different from central differences, which was second order as well? Well, the difference is in both are second order, but really the main difference is that they use different points. Okay. Now, what about the last data point, right? Because I can use neither formula for the last data point because I don't have any points to the right of that last data point. Well, I would have to do the same type of Taylor series derivation going to the left. So going to xi minus 1 and xi minus 2, eliminating the lower, pow the lower powers of h in the following formula. And that's the formula that we arrive at. It uses just the two points to the left of the point xi, so that's perfectly suited for the very last data point. OK, now we got formulas for second order accuracy going to the left or the right or central. But those are all second order. Can we go higher order? Well, all we have to do is add additional points and their Taylor series and use that to eliminate these lower order terms that still remained. So for example, if I add the point xi minus 1 to xi, xi plus 1, and xi plus 2, I would write the Taylor series for this um, point. That's the one that we've seen before, f of xi minus 1, just the Taylor series written out with some additional terms. I write the Taylor series for f xi plus 1, right? We've seen this before, so let me quickly add those terms. And the Taylor series for the fourth point, xi plus 2, We've seen this Taylor series as well, just the distance being 2h. So let me add all of these terms to the equation. Now, we have to find linear combinations of these three equations that eliminates lower powers of h. So the first term we want to eliminate is the h squared term. So what linear combination of these three equations makes the combination of the h squared terms zero. Well, that would be the equation 1 half, so the first equation, plus c1 times the second equation, so 1 half times c1, plus c2 times the third equation, so 4 over 2 times c2, and that I want to be equal to zero. But because I've added an additional point now, I can even eliminate the h cubed term. So what linear combination would make that term, the combination of that term, 0? Well, it would be the first equation, negative 1, 6, plus c1 times 1, 6 from the second equation, plus c2 times the 8, 6 from the third equation. So what we have now is a system of linear equations, right? Two unknowns for two equations that we can just solve. And if we solve this, we find that c1 is equal to negative 3 and c2 is equal to 1 half. 
So now if I combine these Taylor series together using these uh, weighting factors of negative 3 and 1 half, I get f of xi minus 1 plus the c1 times f of xi plus 2 plus the c2 times f of xi plus 2. So that was, well, f of xi minus 1. The c1 is negative 3, so minus 3 times f of xi plus 1. Then the c2 was a half, so plus a half times f of xi plus 2. And what do I have on the right-hand side? Well, I have terms that multiply f of xi. And those are 1 plus c1, so minus 3, plus c2 times the third equation, so plus 1 half. Okay. Next up are the f prime terms, the h terms. So let me factor out h times f prime of xi. So I have a negative 1 from the first equation, minus 3 from the second equation, and then plus 2 times 1 half from the third equation, 2 times 1 half is 1. And then I have the h squared terms, right? But I found out the c1 and c2 to make that combination equal to 0, so that's gone. I have the h cubed terms. Well, I found the combination to make that combination 0, so those are gone as well. And I'm only left with the h to the power 4 terms, right? So something times h to the power 4 times the fourth derivative. And that would be 1 over 24 from the first equation minus 3 times 1 over 24 from the second equation, plus 1 half times 16 over 24 from the third equation, so that's plus 8 over 24. And then there are infinitely many additional terms. Okay, so let's look what we have. Well, let me just copy the left-hand side over and not do anything with it yet. But let me solve these parentheses here. So I have 1 minus 3 plus a half, that is negative 3 halves times f of xi. Then I have minus 1 minus 3 plus 1, that is minus 3 times h times f prime. And then I have 1 over 24 plus 8 over 24 minus 3 over 24, that's 6 over 24, that's 1 fourth, h to the power 4 times the fourth derivative, plus infinitely many additional terms. Let's make some more room here and solve this for f prime. Okay, if I solve this for f prime, I get, let's isolate this first to one side, so 3h f prime at xi, that's equal to minus f of xi minus 1, then minus 3 halves f of xi, and then this one, that's going to be plus 3 times f xi plus 1, and then this one over, minus 1 half f of xi plus 2. And then we have these fourth order terms, a quarter h to the power 4 times the fourth derivative. Let's divide everything by 3h, or let me just multiply it by 2 over 6h, to bring it onto the same common denominator. So on the left hand side I have f prime of xi, and then on the right hand side I have everything divided by 6h, which would be minus 2 times f of xi minus 1, minus 3 times f of xi, then I have plus 6 times f of xi plus 1, then we have, for this term, we have minus f of xi plus 2, and then we have the h to the power 4 terms divided by something h, which makes it h cube, so third order terms. Okay, so there's our finite difference formula now that uses the, chosen, the, the shown points here, which is in fact third order accurate. Okay, so here's the next challenge question. Using n equidistant points in a finite difference formula for the first derivative, what is the highest order that can be achieved for the truncation error? Is it a, the highest order is order n for n equidistant points? Is the highest order n plus 1? Is it n minus 1? Or is it n minus 2? Or are you unsure yet of what the order would be? Well, it turns out that the highest order we can achieve is n minus 1. And we saw this pattern before, right? 
If we had, as before, four points in the last example, we achieved a third order formula. If we used three points, we achieved a second order formula. Adding one additional point will improve the order by one. So if we have a total of n points, our order will be n minus one. Okay, so let's do an example and calculate actual finite difference approximations to the derivative. So here is a table of data values that's given and we are to calculate f prime at x equal to 3 using first order forward and backward and second order forward, backward and central finite differences. Okay, and here are these formulas for all of these finite difference formulas. Okay, let's tackle this. So first off is the first order forward formula. So first, first order forward, that's first. So f prime at 3, that's where I want to calculate it. So where is this? So f prime at 3 is right here, that's x equal to 3. And if I look at my finite difference formula here, Right? I see that I have to use the function value at i plus 1, which is the neighboring point, that's this one, and I have to use the function value at xi minus 1, so the neighboring point to the left, that would be this one, and then I divide by h. So first off, what is h? h is the spacing between adjacent points. Well, they're all equally spaced, right? And the difference, the distance between them is equal to 1. So h is equal to 1. So let me just directly substitute in the values. So 64 minus 8 divided by 1. So the first order finite difference is 64 minus 8 divided by 1. And I know that there is a first order truncation error that we introduce if I approximate it this way. Okay, so that if we calculate this, that's, hold on, made a mistake, right? First order forward. So what did it say? f of xi. Well, f of xi is where? Well, it's not one to the left. It's this point here, right, where xi is equal to three. So that's my blue value. So it is not minus 8, it is actually minus 27. That's my blue value. Okay, so at 64 minus 27, that is equal to 37. Okay, so that's my first order forward. Let's do first order backward. Okay, so f prime of 3 is equal to, here's the formula, f of xi minus f of xi minus 1 divided by h. So my f of xi is this psi in blue value. Then I need a value to the left of it. Okay, that would be this guy here, the neighbor to the left. That would be my f of xi minus 1. So that means f of xi is 27 minus my neighbor to the left, that is 8, divided by h, which is equal to 1, plus first order terms. So this would be my orange, that comes from the table, that is my 8, and the sign value is the 27 from the table. So 27 minus 8 is 19. Okay, so that's first order backward. Let's do second order, second order forward. Okay, second order forward is this formula over here. So I'm going to the right into the forward direction. 
And let's see what I already have marked. So I already know f of xi, that's the sine. Then I have this green, that's f of xi plus 1. And then I need one more, that's the f of xi plus 2. So let's just substitute those table values in. So f prime of 3 is equal to minus 3 times 27 plus 4 times 64 minus 125. So the 125, right, is the f of xi plus 2. The 27 is the f of xi. And then we had the green value that is the f of xi plus 1, that is the 64. And this entire thing divided by h, a 2h, so 2 times 1. Okay, and if you do these values, you'll find this is uh, 50. Hold on. If I use an equal sign, I have to say that I have second order truncation errors. And if you uh, type in these values, you will find that the second order forward has a value of 25. Okay, let's do second order backward. So second order backwards is this formula here. Okay, so I have the blue value, that's f of xi. I have the f of xi minus 1 value, and let me mark the f of xi minus 2 as yellow. So let me write this out and just substitute in the values. f prime at 3 is equal to 3 times 27 minus 4 times 8 plus 1. Let me color those. So that's the 1 from the table. This is the 8 from the table. This is the 27, the f of xi. And the entire thing divided by 2 times h, so 2 times 1. If you type in these values, you will find, hold on, I forgot, second order terms. In order to be able to use the equal sign, Typing in these values, the approximation is, this is, turns out to be 25 as well. And then finally, central, finite differences, so second order central. Okay, so second order central is right here. So I have f of xi plus 1, that's the green one, minus x f of xi minus 1, that is the orange one. So the green value minus the orange value. So that would be f prime of 3 is equal to green value, so 64 minus the orange value is 8 divided by 2 times h, 2 times 1, plus second order terms. That's approximately equal to 64 minus 8 is 56, divided by 2, that's approximately 28. Okay, so I have, of course, not always the same value, because each one of these formulas has a different truncation error, but they're all more or less in the same ballpark. Thank you for watching.